now with charter schools is there's a big pile of money. We give it to a charter school operator and say, see you later. That was Attorney General Mark Burnovich apparently surprised to learn that the state's charter school law allows owners to do virtually anything they want with taxpayer dollars, even spend it on themselves. Now, after several reports on charter millionaires by the Arizona Republic's Craig Harris, Burnovich and others are calling for greater accountability on how the money is spent. Craig Harris joins us. Welcome back to Square Off. Good morning. Thanks to you. Uh, you've written several stories about charter school owners getting rich beyond their and maybe mostly our wildest dreams. Before we get to those stories, I want to stipulate to a couple, a couple of things. Have any of these charter school owners, these successful ones, broken the law? Absolutely not. Everything is legal. And part of it is we have legislators who are benefiting from the charter school laws that they were part of in the legislature. Okay, and they are all private businesses like the private businesses you or I work for. Correct, they're okay. all privately, they're either for-profit companies or non-profit companies. Okay, so what is the problem when a state legislator like Eddie Farnsworth, who you just wrote about in your most recent stories, cashes out his charter for millions of dollars and then sets up a new company to profit off that same charter he just sold? What's the problem there? Well, the issue is, is that the schools in many respects are being paid for twice because he started his schools. He was one of the first pioneer school, pioneers of the charter school movement. He started his chain back in 1995 and he built a very successful four school chain out in the East Valley and charter school operators get up to $2,000 more per kid to pay for expenses because they don't get local bonding. So he, they take that money and they pay down the debt on the schools. Now, after he's built up a huge amount of equity, he's gonna sell those schools again, and he reaps all the profit. Now, we've calculated it'll either be between 12 million or 30 million, depending on what numbers you used on the audits he provided to the state. The argument is, well, it's legal, number one, and number two, it's a business. This is the way businesses operate. Well, that's true, that is a business, but what is going on with Mr. Farnsworth's school is he's also benefiting from everything that goes on in the district school. He gets public money to educate public kids. He put himself and his teachers in the Arizona State Retirement System, which he'll also get a very big pension when he retires. He also gets all the other benefits that come with public schools. However, he gets to cash out on the sale of the buildings. And public schools, of course, can't do that. Now, when you hire a contractor for the state to either build a road or to provide medical services, they can't enroll in the state retirement system. They don't get guaranteed money from taxpayers to, to do a certain project. They get a set amount of money for a one-time uh, service, but Mr. Farnsworth keeps getting money over and over and over. And they don't get to keep the building. And they don't get to keep the building. Either. A couple things I learned, retirement system, I did not realize Eddie Farnsworth and other charter administrators qualify for the state retirement system. Right, you can choose if you're a charter school operator to either be in or to be out. So in one respect, um, critics of charter schools give Mr. Farnsworth credit because it costs more money to be in the system. And so he has put his teachers in the retirement system. He's also put himself in the retirement system and his balance is close to three quarters of a million dollars uh, in the retirement system right now of what he has saved along with getting matches from taxpayers. And one question I get all the time, you probably do too, how could he have cast votes on charter school laws while in the legislature? It's completely legal. He has voted numerous times uh, to pass budgets that have increased overall spending for public schools, but also there's lines in every budget that also increases funding substantially for charter schools, and he voted on that numerous times. Okay, let's finish up by this call for accountability. What kind of things are people calling for to make charters more accountable? Well, I think what one thing people are calling for is that you can't have for-profit companies. You also need to be able to audit and go in and look at their books. Uh, you also need what another call is that you know you need to segregate the money um, the argument on charter operators is once we get the money it's private and it's ours and the, the attorney general is saying well we need to be able to go in and look and see how they spend their money just like district schools do um, and so that's some of it and then other folks have argued that if you need to, for full transparency, you should get rid of these management companies because what a lot of nonprofits do, like Basis, which is an extremely successful charter school, they take almost all their money and they transfer it over to a private company that's operated by the founders of the company. And so there's no transparency on how much that money went. And the founders of that company also own an $8 million condominium in New York City. Which you've written about as well. All right, Craig Harris, thanks Thank so much for your great reporting. Thank you.